welcome to Stone Magpie. My name is Suzanne and as you see on my table I've got the moon picture which I recently unboxed from GBFKE and I'm going to work on it from the packets so no kitting up for this one and you may well be surprised that I'm not working on another diamond painting which I recently kitted up and that is because this one is a round I can do it from the packets and it's because I recently had a little bit of a fall, <laughs> you know, nothing dramatic or anything, but basically I fainted at the top of the stairs and fell down. So I am struggling a little bit at the moment, but I wanted to do some diamond painting to share with you. I am fine, just a little bit bruised, no broken bones or anything. So I'm going to work on this one because I think it'll be a little bit easier than the bigger diamond painting that I've got ready to start very soon once the bruising has eased a little bit. So I'm going to pop some release papers on to get going. And I just wanted to have a little bit of a video time with you because Kimber from Kimber's Crafts very kindly tagged me in, um, I don't know what you call them, it's a little bit like where you tag people to answer questions. So I'm going to attempt to do that today and hopefully be able to answer all the questions in the list. I think there's about 25 questions and if I remember rightly, some of them are quite tricky. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to do my best and I'm going to say that because of my little fall I'm going to um, put a caveat on there that <laughs> if you don't like my answers then <laughs> it's because I had a little bit of um, not a head bump but yeah a bit of trauma <laughs> and yes as I say not being dramatic at all but when the doctor said it was miraculous I did like that <laughs> I'll take being miraculous any day. Right, okay, we're now ready to start. If you watch my channel regularly, you'll know that with release papers, I don't tend to fill the whole canvas with them. I tend to do two rows, so I've got a working row and like a stop row so that we know where to stop once the section is finished. Oh, and look at that first section, that lovely tree with the background there. So that's what we're going to be working on today. And as I said, there are a few questions to get through, so we may well go into the next section as well, depending on how it goes, diamond painting today. Right, I'm going to zoom in for you. You'll see me picking up the packets. I have laid out um, one to five, six to ten so I've got like rows of five although I think I've lost 15 there it is um just to make it easier for me to find normally I kit up by symbol but I've got the legend here to refer to so that I know which packet to grab for which symbol okay I hope you're comfortable I hope you've got a nice cuppa in hand and let's diamond paint together so I'm going to pop a lovely cover minder on just to keep this nicely held. So I made these myself. I got these buttons from AliExpress and popped magnets on the back. And I think they're perfect for this painting, being a little bit mystical, like our moon, which we now have covered up. <laughs> right. Okay, so I hope you can see that clearly because I definitely need to be comfortable today. I can't stretch too much. So let's zoom in and get going. With, we'll start with the G code. I usually start in the very corner here. And, oh gosh, have I got a legend down this side? I have, hmm. I'm just wondering whether to turn that one so I can see the legend <laughs> and that one. <laughs> oh 
idea. So that I don't have to crane my neck to the legend below. So not the usual way that I lay release papers, but today's a different sort of a day. So we can be adaptable, can't we, as diamond painters? Not as, not as neat as I like them normally. Right, let's try this again. Okay. So G is number 13. Oh, this very, very dark green to begin with. Right, question number one. Oh my goodness, I'm already stumped by this question. <laughs> How many diamond paintings have you completed? Oh no. Um, oh, I should have done a bit of prep on this, I think. I have absolutely no idea how many I've completed. Right, let me think what I've got framed on my walls. I have got Libra from Diamond Painting Deutschland on my wall. I've got Crystal of Enchantment. That's two. I've got Ellie the Elephant from Diamond Dots. That's three. I've got Elation from Dreamer Designs. That's four. I've got my Elephant, which I bought from Amazon. That's five. Um, I know I've done the Zodiac Circle from Spell Queen. That's six. Um, oh, I did the Partners in Crime, seven. Lumina. Eight. What else have I actually completed? Oh my goodness, this is a hard question because I've only just started logging in a logbook my diamond painting. Oh, I've just finished Crystal Ball. Silly me, should remember that one. Um, I've only just started logging my diamond paintings where I'm up to with them. So... I'm going to guess uh, probably around 20, I'm going to guess, which doesn't sound a lot actually <laughs> in all of the time that I've been diamond painting, so I'm probably way off there. Um, I'm sure I've, I'm sure I've completed more than that. Because I've also made some charts. I did my adamant and I did the Justice Diamond painting that I made charts for. I've done mystery paintings. Do you know, I'm not quite sure, but all of my diamond paintings are in playlists on my channel. So if you do want to check it out, <laughs> do a quick add up. For me because obviously I do projects as well so I've done things like placemats and key rings and all sorts of bits mirrors and boxes and oh, all sorts of things so that's a hard question and that was question number one <laughs> let's see what question number two is oh my goodness this is hard as well how many diamond paintings do you have in your stash Oh, I'm going to say too many probably because every now and again I think, oh my goodness, I forgot that I had that one. And the most recent that I did that with is Crows from Diamond Art Club. I completely forgot that I had Crows. And that's a beautiful diamond painting. So I think I might need my logbook beside me. I'm going to go and get it very quickly. Okay, here it is. Right, how many paintings do I have in my stash? And I know that not everything is logged. So, let's see. These are the paintings that I've unboxed and not yet started. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, 
eight. That's the one I'm starting. No, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And I know I've got more than that. So I would say mm, maybe 40. I would say 40 in my stash. I really need to fill that in properly, don't I? So that's what my answer. When did you begin diamond painting? Oh, now this one is a bit easier because it's easy for me having a channel <laughs> and knowing when that started. So my channel started in August 2020 and I actually started recording. Don't bother looking because it's a terrible video. <laughs> It's still on there, but um, I started just as I was getting to the end of my first diamond painting. Didn't know anything, didn't know much at all, but enjoyed it so much that I decided that um, to start a channel. Because I'd watched a few to see what diamond painting was all about, but I didn't, you know, I was a bit green, let's put it that way. So that's an easy one. Around, I would say, July, June, July 2020 is when I started diamond painting. If you could only purchase from one diamond painter... Oh, wow. Question number four. If you could only purchase from one diamond painting company for the rest of your life, who would you purchase from and why? That's another toughie, isn't it? And... One diamond painting for the rest of your life. Well, mm, I don't think I'm going to be able to answer this one. I really am not because I truly believe that variety is the spice of life. And it's not just in diamond painting. I like a variety in crafting as well. So, no, I'm not going to be able to do that one, unfortunately. Mm, because I like to try new things. Who doesn't like to try new things? Keep it fresh. Get different ideas about things. Um, and different diamond painting companies do different styles. Um, they might add extra bits that other people don't. Or, you know, different canvases, different drills. All sorts of differences. So... We've got to embrace those, don't we? So, no, sorry, number four has been answered, but probably not in the way that was expected. <laughs> Let me know if, um, if you would have been able to answer that question. Right, do you just buy from one diamond painting company or do you also like to have a good rummage around and try new companies, see what they're like, and then probably have a core favourite set of companies. Right, okay, so I'm just gonna finish this little bit and see what question number five is. It's going so well so far. <laughs> Number five, when diamond painting, what is your go-to media to consume? Audiobooks, podcasts, YouTube, etc. Okay, well, actually, when I'm diamond painting, sometimes I'm talking to all my friends out there and filming as I diamond paint. So when I am not doing that, I love listening to the radio. I do. I just think, I just love music and it's so joyful and upbeat and then songs come on that you might not have heard for quite a while and then the memories flood in. So I love listening to the radio. I also love watching other diamond painters. However, I don't do that while I'm diamond painting. I tend to, because I just like to see the canvases and watch the unboxings rather than have them on in the background. So radio is my go-to. 
Number six, what is your favourite category to diamond paint? Landscapes, fantasy, animals, etc. Let me just get my next diamond on the go. Number 12, deep blue for F. Well, <laughs> I think you'll know the answer to this one if you watch my channel regularly. I think you'll know straight away that I am drawn to the mystical, I would say. I didn't even realise that I did do that until <laughs> I started seeing the pattern in my buying. And I think moons, um, crystal balls, mystical figures, uh, fairies, all of that sort of thing. I Trees, trees is a big one that I'm also really drawn to. And sometimes I do have to think when I'm choosing, do I really need another tree? <laughs> this one that I'm diamond painting today, I was so pleased with because I wanted a moon picture and the trees don't obscure the moon in this one. So I thought this was a real find. Um, so yes, I think I sort of edge towards those types of paintings. However, I also am drawn to paintings that I like the rendering of. So sometimes, and I'll tell you, I can give you a prime example of this. At the moment, Diamond Art Club have a diamond painting that I think the rendering is superb. And I haven't bought it yet. It is in my wish list and I keep umming and ahhing because it's not a diamond painting that I would normally go for. But I'm really tempted and it is, it's a panda scene. And it's not, it's not the Fiji, Fuji one. It's the, um, it was brought out fairly recently. You may well know exactly which one. I should have looked up the name of it, but I didn't know I'd be talking about it. And so I would say if diamond paintings are done really well, then I'm drawn to those too, because they are so clever. Um, other things, I do like a landscape though as well, you see, I'm back to the variety. I do like to have a, um, a change sometimes. And I was drawn to the Sailor's Ruin, which is a mermaidy one. I suppose that's still fantasy though, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'm going to say mystical fantasy is probably what I am. And I suppose the zodiacs and things like that. So yes, that tends to be my genre with a few little things thrown in for a bit of variety. Okay, where am I up to? Number seven. Oh, the, what is the artist? Surely it should be who is the artist? What is the artist you have completed the most diamond paintings from? Okay. The completions, I have to say probably Josephine Wall because I've completed two of hers. Um, I have bought a few Christopher Lovells, not yet finished them. Um, so yeah, I would say completions, Josephine Wall. Next, number eight. What is the artist you own the most diamond paintings from? Oh, I think I've already answered that. I think it's Christopher Lovell, although I have got two from Anne Stokes being the crystal ball and the sailor's ruin. So I would say those two. Right, let's change color. So I think that's the darkest of those completed now. Let's go to, let's do number five. Number five is number five. Oh, it is still quite a dark color actually. Doesn't look dark on the canvas, this grey. OK, 
Okay, um, number nine. What is your go-to wax when diamond painting? Ah, now this is one that's easy for me to answer because not that long ago, I tried Abby's diamond painting putty for the first time and I absolutely love it. She is available on Etsy or you can also buy it from Diamond Art Studio. And I find that I hardly ever have to change and the scents are beautiful. I've only got one pack. I have got quite a few on my wish list. So Abby's Diamond Putty Sweet Peach is what I've got. I've been using it for a little while. It comes in this cute pouch that keeps it fresh. And you can see just how much I've still got left of that because you just don't need to change it that often. I think it's fabulous. And I have got it in my pen at the moment and I've just got a pow of scent from opening that pouch. Really nice. So all I need to do every now and again, you can see where the dents are, where the diamonds have been. I just run my finger over the top, smooth it out a bit. And you can see it's indented in the front, but it still works. So even though it has gone quite far into the nib, it's still there to pick up those single diamonds. So yeah, I absolutely love it. I think it's really, really good. Now, the only time I don't use the putty is for ABs. For my ABs, I've got a different diamond painting pen here. I still use the pink wax, bit, uh, the pink wax from Diamond Art Club or the blue wax from Oraloa or a mix of the two. <laughs> <laughs> so there we are that's that's an easy one hooray got an easy question to answer right number 10 what do you do with your finished diamond paintings do you hang them put them in portfolio or something else okay well I don't have a portfolio where at all I tend to most of them I've hung the two that I've completed that I haven't hung, I've actually rolled into a diamond painting bag. I, I can't remember where those bags were from. They're like a linen bag and I've rolled them up and I've popped them away in my diamond painting cupboard. Um, but that's not to say that I won't frame them in future. It's just that, you know, we tend to run out of a bit of <laughs> wall space, don't we? So what I'm thinking is maybe getting a different sort of a frame so that I can change up my paintings um, sometimes and, you know, refresh them. And I have seen some very clever people doing great things with a pole and some holes and you basically put rings in the top of your canvases and hang them that way and then you can easily change them up. So I'm looking into that and seeing if that's what's something I want to do. I don't quite trust the magnetic frames because the big diamond paintings that I've got stored um, are quite heavy. So yeah, that's what I do. I either frame them or I store them rolled in a protective sleeve bag. Okay, number 10. Do you like to open your kits right away or do you keep them sealed until you are ready to work on them? Okay, easy one again for me. I like to open them because I do my unboxings on the channel and I like to see all of the contents and then I will store them put it all back to hopefully how it was when I got it. <laughs> Sometimes the diamonds are a little bit messier than when I opened it, but I try my best to put them away nicely. And sometimes I do take out, if it's Diamond Art Club, for example, 
I will take out the cover minders and washi tape to store those and use before the diamond painting. But otherwise I pack it all back up, seal it up and pop it into my stash. Now, if I didn't have a channel, I think I would still unbox them to have a good look at the canvas because it's so exciting. I really don't think I would be able to resist opening them up and having a look. So yeah, that's my answer to that one. I'm sure I would still do that. Oh, I love looking at new kits. Okay, 12. What is your number one unicorn kit that you currently do not own but hope to one day? Oh, that's a very um, specific unicorn kit. Now, does it mean that it has to be a unicorn? Because that's how I read it at first. Or does that mean a unicorn kit, like a mystical, if you could have any kit you wanted? What does it mean? Let me read it again. What is your number one unicorn kit that you currently do not own but hope to one day? Surely it can't be specific unicorn because not everybody is into unicorns. I think it means a mystical kit that I haven't currently found. Okay, well, currently I would say that I have never been able to find a moon, just a moon, a big moon, <laughs> in the middle of a canvas with nothing else on it that has the actual um, craters, the dents in the moon, just in really good detail, but not just in diamonds. I think, wouldn't it be stunning if there were special diamonds and crystals and lots and lots of different interest within that moon diamond painting to make it just a standalone version of the beauty and magnificence of what we see in the sky if we're lucky every evening when it's not cloudy. I think that would be, oh, it, it would be unresistible for me if I saw a kit like that really well done with just stunning detail so that's what I'm going to read about that one rather it be a unicorn kit specifically so I hope I'm right in how I've approached that question number 13 what is the kit in your stash you are most looking forward to working on <gasps> Oh, that is another tough question, isn't it? Because when we choose the next kit to work on, oh, it's usually the one I've just recently unboxed is the one that I'd be like, oh, I really want to start this one right now. And that's true of every kit that I unbox because they always are so gorgeous. And I've got so many lovely, lovely kits in my stash. Oh, let's get my pictures again. <laughs> let's see if I can get some help. Okay. Ah, oh, now you see, this first one is the complete crystal kit. It's the elephant with the girl I got from AliExpress and it's all crystals. So I would love to see that one completed to see the finish of that one. Uh, oh, that would be fun with all the groovy patterns that... Mm, no, not that one. Oh, that's a lovely one as well with special diamonds. That's a nice bright one. That's Benedict Blue from Diamond Art Club. Moon Goddess. <gasps> Another one. Mm, that's not this one. Crows with those lovely iridescents. See, how on earth do you choose? Oh, that's, yeah, that one's so melancholic. Just, oh, magic potion with all those beautiful colours. Zodiac, now that's a stunning one with the beautiful ABs in the blended, subtle colours. Another, see, how on earth do you choose? How do you choose? 
the next one I am starting that I've kitted up is Supernova because it is still summertime. It's getting to late summer. I was hoping to have already got started on this one. It's kitted up ready. So that is going to be my next diamond painting. Okay, I'm not sure if I've answered that very well, but that's, <laughs> that's where we are. Oh, dear me. I'm going to have to watch everybody's tag questions to see if they've struggled as much as me with how difficult these questions are. Oh, right, next. Number 14, do you prefer confetti, colour blocking or a mix of both? Well, I think I lean towards confetti as more enjoyable because I love the different colour blends. I think the finish on a confetti painting is so beautiful. And I like changing colours. There's something about the colour change whilst I'm diamond painting that has a real feel for me. So I don't want to work on one colour for too long. I like the change. So I'm going to say confetti. But sometimes, here we go, the caveat. <laughs> sometimes it's lovely to have a mix of both because if you're swapping colours all the time, then it can get, it can slow you down, can't it, when we're diamond painting. And I know it's not a race and I know it's all about enjoyment, but sometimes a bit of light relief and working on one colour just for a little while is a nice stop so but mainly confetti for me let's do that r code that's shouting to me there just one of these purples oh no there's another one there too so i'll just try and take them out of the packet like this i do actually enjoy working out of packets you know i did do that with my fairy from oraloa worked out of the packets and that was a big diamond painting Right, let me see where we're up to. Number 15, how do you pick which piece you will work on next? <laughs> With difficulty. <laughs> um, no, sometimes I think let's have a change from that diamond painting company and try um, a different one for a while. So, I've worked on a lot of Diamond Art Club at the moment. I love Supernova from Dreamer Designs and I've not done a Dreamer Designs for quite a while now. So, and it was such a beautiful summer picture as I've just mentioned that it was an obvious choice this one for me to start next. However, I do sometimes think well, maybe I should have done this one next and I have that little dilemma going on. I have in the past also done a survey out to the community on my community tab to ask what they would like to see next. And that's what I did for the Irish picture that I'm still trying to get completed from work. So all sorts of different ways really. And honestly, it has helped me having my logbook because you know what it's like when you have a stash, you tend to forget what's in the stash. As I've proven today by not being able to answer how many exactly I have, because <laughs> I tend to tuck them away and then one, one little place is full, I'll find another little place and start stashing just like a squirrel. <laughs> squirrel them away. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's how I tend to choose is either diamond painting company or time of year. So for example, we're coming into autumn, so I might want to work on a more autumn picture, Christmas, you know, that sort of thing. So lots of different ways to choose the next diamond painting. Sometimes the community do influence me. I know 
too easily influenced, aren't I? Where if a few people say, oh, I can't wait to see that one. I can't wait to see you working on that one. I'd love to see the completion for that one. Then I do also then get excited too and say, oh yes, that's a good idea. I'm going to do that next. So <laughs> you are all bad influences on me, as you know. <laughs> And I love it. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It's always appreciated. I love the diamond painting community. We're all fantastic people. So thank you so much. Honestly, the joy that you bring me just adds so much depth to my diamond painting experience. And I really do thank you all for that. I love hearing your comments and hearing about what you're up to too. So yes. It's fantastic. Okay, where am I up to? Number 16. What is your favourite season or holiday? What, uh, no. What is your favourite season or holiday today? I'm in paint. Hmm. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. What is your favourite season or holiday? Maybe it means in diamond painting. Maybe? Um, what was I doing? Number two. I don't really understand the question on this one. I think it means what's the favourite season that you like to diamond paint? Perhaps that's what it means. Um, oh, well, you've got to love Christmas, don't you? With all of the joy that goes into the Christmas season, the happiness, those snowy pictures or the really bright Santa pictures and the snowmen and oh, it's so joyful. So I love that season for diamond painting and we can also make so many projects, can't we, for like the Christmas tree decorations and last year I made some key rings and actually instead of using them as key rings, Christmassy ones, I popped them on the Christmas tree. So things like that, really good fun. Just seeing the number two again. There we are. Um, I am also drawn though, as I just said, to the different colours of the different seasons. So sometimes when it's summery, I go more bright. Then autumn, I'll go more subtle and have more of the um, oranges and reds and deep burgundies. And oh, I do love autumn. So. <laughs> Variety again. Spring is usually more pastelies and oh, so there's so much to have from each season. I just love change, I think. I just love that. Just notice those number twos there that hid from me. There's no getting away peeking out there. Let's pop those in just in case it's one of those things that shout at you if you miss a colour. Don't want, um, don't want that to happen if we can help it. Right, number seven's next, I think. Ooh, this subtle mushroom colour. See what I mean about the colour changes as we go along? Oh, I just love that. Right, where am I up to with my questions? Let's see. Number 17. Do you work on one kit at a time <laughs> or multi multiple whips at once? Oh, easy peasy one for me to answer. I used to work on one kit at a time and then I started working on two at a time and now I've got quite a few. <laughs> I think the theme of my answering is variety. I love to have a variety on the go. So I tend to have what I call a serious piece, which might be a big canvas on the go or a more expensive one, and then smaller kits alongside, or I might have a square and a round kit on the go just to change it up a little bit. I might have a project type kit on the go, or it might be, as I say, I've got, just need a few more diamonds, I think. Um, 
I've got a kit at work so that if I get time in break times, I can get my diamond painting out. So when I go on holiday, I might have a, t a different kit to do, things like that. So yeah, I do have quite a few on the go in different places at different times and for different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear me yeah but it, it helped I like it I like knowing that wherever I go I'm going to be able to have a fix <laughs> okay number 18 neutral dark pieces or colorful pieces I think this is another easy one for me to answer I love colour. I just love colour. It really cheers me up. Um, so I would say I, you see it's summertime though, so I've got loads of bright kits at the moment and when we get to autumn it probably will get a bit subtler. But there's still loads of colours in it and as long as there's colours I'm happy. So I have done black and white diamond painting. See, so I might have even done more than what I said at the beginning. Um, and even the black and white has got color change in it with all the different grays and the depths and tones of the colors. So I can work on the darker neutral kits, but I do love the brights, I do. And also the pastels, when they have a lot of colour, different. Oh, it's so pretty, isn't it? With the, with the pastel colours when they blend together and oh, they just look gorgeous. So I would say for me, probably colour. Whatever form that is, brights, pastels, as long as there's colour change, I love it. Let's do those number threes. A softer grey, this one. So get that chap in straight away, it's shouting at me from up there. Okay, um, next question is number 19. Large pieces or snack size? Okay. Well, both. <laughs> because they both offer different aspects, don't they? We love a snack size. We love the little gorgeous ones. I think it depends on the picture. So... If I was to do a snack size and it ended up in a big blur, then I, it, it would make me feel quite sad. And I think as we get experienced in diamond painting, we can tell, can't we, if a picture is too busy to be a small size. We know that if it's detailed, then we need to go bigger. So, sorry, I've just noticed that number seven there. Um, so I like snack size, I like the project type kits, I do think big kits have a lot to offer and the stunning detail that you can get from having a big kit. They are more difficult to frame and show, <laughs> but for the detail, lovely. Number nine is A. Saying that, um, the Paint Gem series, I've never done one. I've seen them on different channels and I do think they look fantastic. Really clever for their size and you'd easily be able to display those. So again, it depends on how they're rendered, doesn't it? If you get detail or you get the suggestion of detail like those paintings like the master paintings that they do I think they're great because like the Mona Lisa and things you can or is it the girl with the earring you can see what it is without it being 
really clear, unpixelated. So I do like those as well. I was tempted for quite a while to get some paint gem and I haven't yet. Right, next is number 20. Please diamonds with tweezers or a pen. Okay, so I think that means do I use do I use a pen or tweezers to diamond paint? I use predominantly a diamond painting pen. I think they're much easier to use and they multi-place. I have used tweezers in the past. Tends to be for special shapes. And it's fine to do that. However, I, I haven't cracked the ability of being able to multi-place with tweezers. I think anybody that can multi-place with tweezers is a wizard. <laughs> and I love multi-placing. So I, I think my tool of choice would always be a diamond painting pen if, if I can. Okay, number 21, squares or rounds? Okay, <laughs> again, both. I'm doing a round at the moment. I like rounds because you don't have to be as accurate as with squares. And I know some people might disagree with that for the finish, but with squares, you really do have to be bob on, I think. Otherwise, you know, they can run away. And I'm not really, really, really precise with my placements with squares either. You know, I, I do have paintings where they've gone offline a little bit and that's fine, I don't mind it. So for rounds, I quite like the fact that it, it's faster. If I like a picture and it's in rounds, then I, I'll do it. So I would say if I had a canvas with the option of square or round, I would go square because I like the finish of squares better than rounds. But as I said, I do like to work on a round for the speed and for the fact that I don't have to be as accurate with my placements. Okay, so where are we? Number 22. What is your favorite method for placing AB drills? Okay, well, AB drills, I place exactly the same as my usual diamonds. Apart from, as I've already mentioned, if I'm using putty, then I swap out my pen to use the wax and that's only because this putty is a bit reluctant to let go of ABs. It doesn't take the coating off but it's it won't release <laughs> from the pen so that's why I swap my pen for ABs. Missed an A there so A is number nine. Not many questions left, so number 23. What is your preferred method of sectioning off a canvas? Oh, well, I think I have already demonstrated that question with my release papers, two rows of release papers. Once I get to the end of this row, I then use these release papers under the next row and continue. So that is my method. Number 24, do you have any other crafty hobbies aside from diamond painting? Yes, I do. <laughs> I like lots of different crafts. Variety. <laughs> I'm just going to do a few more placements while I finish the questions. So G, what was G number 13? Um, 
I do. I In the past, I have done all sorts. I've done um, cross-stitch. I have done knitting. Oh, I love knitting. The only thing is, the things I knit, I don't want to wear. <laughs> I think I'm not that great at finishing. I love the knitting side. The finishing, not so good. So I'm really good at things like cushion covers and things like that. And I did make Ben, my son, when he was a baby, loads of baby cardigans with all of the Aran. Oh, I love all of that patterning in knitting. Um, and he did actually wear those because I think as they were little, I finished them quite well. So yeah, gorgeous. In four ply as well, I used to use um, the thin wool. Oh, gorgeous. So I've also done card making and paper crafts and jewelry making. Love beading in jewelry making and using sterling silver. I still wear some bracelets every day that I made like stretchy sterling silver bracelets. Loved making those. And then the wire wrapping and beading. Oh yeah, I love that. And I've also tried glass fusing, which isn't that easy. I didn't really get on that well with it. So, but I had a go and I got a microwave kiln and had a try, but yeah. Not that successfully, <laughs> so that one wasn't really for me. I also love the pottery program, Pottery Throwdown, where they make their pots and then fire them. So I sort of did a little bit of delve on the internet about kilns and I read somewhere that you can, if you get the right sort of pottery paint, fire pottery in this microwave kiln that I have. So I had a little go at that. I have to say I bought the, the pots ready made because I wasn't interested in making the pots. I just wanted to paint pots. And I had varying degrees of success in that. Um, in fact, I'll go and get one and show you. Okay, a couple of pots that I made. Um, so I bought these pots, as I say, bisque fired, and then I painted them with a special paint that melts in the microwave kiln. Takes quite a while and it's quite tricky to do. I was pleased with this one. I got a really nice even finish in the green and I painted a feather on the top with the different colours and I was quite pleased with that one. Apart from it sort of cracked in the kiln so that's a shame. And I painted inside, painted a feather inside as well. And again, that inside bit looks a little bit, it's not solid, is it? It's a bit wishy-washy. But yeah, I love doing those. I, they were really good fun and really good experiment. But yeah. And then I painted a tree, funnily enough. <laughs> and then this, oh, it's a bit dusty in there. Need to do my cleaning bit better. But that feather was less successful and I think it looks more like a centipede. <laughs> so, yeah. And that one fired okay. But there was a lot of, a lot of trial and error and terrible results with sometimes the lids would um, fall in, you know, so it would warp in the microwave because they have to be microwave for a long time and they're absolutely roasting hot when they come out and you have to be very, 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 very careful when you do that because it's a bit like melted glass, that paint. Yeah, but I had fun experimenting, but now I've done it um, and I think it's because of the varying results. It's quite a lot of work when things go wrong and you haven't got you know, a nice product to show at the end of it to use. I found it a little bit frustrating at times, but I had a go and I have got, um, like I say, a couple of pots to show for it. 
Um, what else? I think that's about it for my crafting experience. At school, I did learn the string when you knot the string and make plant hangers. And I love doing that. And I cannot remember for the life of me how you do it now, but yeah. Okay, so number 25, last question. Who do you tag to do this video? Oh, okay, right, well, I have quite a few channels, as you can imagine, that I'm subscribed to for diamond painting. And one of the channels that I have been watching a lot and really helped me when I first started diamond painting is Add More Zest. And I'm not sure if Rebecca will have already done this tag. I didn't see anything, but because I've been rather, <laughs> rather busy lately, um, I'm not fully up to scratch with her videos. Sorry, sorry, Rebecca. I promise I will do a catch up. Um, but yes, Rebecca's add more zest. If she would like to answer these questions, then that's somebody that I would be really interested to hear from. And the second choice is Lisa's Colouring Corner. Lisa's Colouring Corner, as you can imagine, is a mix of diamond painting and adult colouring. And it's a lovely channel and Lisa is so friendly, she's lovely. So I would be really interested to hear Lisa's answers to these questions too, if she would like to do it. No pressure. Let's try and keep the questions on the go if we can. But as I say, they are quite difficult questions to answer. <laughs> so if you prefer not to, then fair enough. Right, so we've made a start on our moon diamond painting and I hope that you've enjoyed hearing my <laughs> wishy-washy answers <laughs> to all the questions and let me know if you would have found those questions really difficult too. Thanks for joining me today. Take care, enjoy your own diamond painting. Until next time, bye. Oh, I've just seen there is a bonus question. <laughs> There's a bonus question. Right, the bonus question is, if you still have it, show us your first diamond painting you ever completed. Of course, I still have my first diamond painting ever completed, so I will get that and show you now. Right, pop that aside. Here it is. It is in a frame, so I'll probably will get some reflection. Apologies. Here is my elephant diamond painting, my first ever diamond painting that I completed. And look at all those colours. And it is a square as well. If you're worried about doing squares as your first diamond painting, it can be done. No problem at all. So, and of course, it's an elephant. If you watch my channel, you will know that I love elephants. So there was no way I was going to resist this one <laughs> with all those colours. Again, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. Take care, everyone. And I really am going this time. Bye for now. <laughs>